I'm going to give you seven tips to potentially double your personal injury settlement. Let's get started. I'm Florida personal injury attorney, Justin Ziegler. The first tip to potentially double your personal injury settlement is to not believe the insurance adjuster. You should listen to the insurance adjuster and listen very intensely, but you should not trust the insurance adjuster. To understand how insurance companies settle cases, let's look at the case involving GEICO. GEICO essentially reduced or took away the settlement authority of adjusters who were paying out in the top half of claims. Now, adjusters do not want to have their settlement authority stopped or suspended. Why? Because it's one extra step that in future claims, they're going to have to ask their supervisor for permission, whereas they may already have that authority on their own if they don't need permission. It's the GEICO employee would give the average loss payouts, the average amount getting paid out per claim to these employees so that they know where they stood in the division. A GEICO adjuster was proud that he was recognized at the quarterly celebration for having the lowest average claim payouts. So to keep it simple, adjusters want to pay out as little as possible. In a motorcycle case where I represented the injured motorcycle rider, my client was riding a motorcycle in Hialeah heading straight down the road where an 18-wheeler was coming in the oncoming direction. The 18-wheeler struck my client and my client flew off the bike. I personally met my client at the hospital. Here's a photo that I took of my client while he was in the hospital. He fractured the bone beneath his knee and fractured a finger and had surgery. And the insurance adjuster for the 18-wheeler that hit him told me that the case was set aside for $100,000. In other words, the adjuster was telling me that he had reserved $100,000 to pay my claim. Just several months later, we settled for $445,000. Had I believed the insurance adjuster, we would have left $345,000 on the table. You can see this chart that compares the initial $100,000 offer and the $445,000 settlement. Now, after attorney's fees, cost, and paying back medical bills, my client received $263,522 in his pocket. Now, even though the adjuster in this case was nice, had I believed him, it would have left a tremendous amount of money on the table. So one thing that adjusters do is by being nice to you, they try to win your trust, but you have to be very careful and never trust adjusters. Let me give you another example of why you should not believe insurance adjusters. My client was shopping at a supermarket in Miami, Florida. He was already on crutches from a previous surgery and he slipped and fell in what he claimed was water on the floor. After the fall, he had two skin grafts to his leg. The claims company for the supermarket sent me a letter where they denied liability and essentially said that the supermarket did nothing wrong. In a slip and fall case, you need to prove that the supermarket knew or should have known that there was water on the floor or that the floor was unreasonably slippery. So we had two options. One is to believe the insurance adjuster, which I've already recommended to never do, or two was to march ahead and file a lawsuit. I sued in his case and the supermarket sent me photos of my client on the floor that showed the dirty spot on the floor next to him. We took several depositions in this case and we settled the case for $300,000 a couple months before trial. Now, had I believed the insurance adjuster who was handling the claim for the supermarket, we would have left $300,000 on the table. You can see the comparison between the initial offer, which essentially was zero because they denied liability, and the $300,000 settlement. As you can see here, my client received $128,560 in his pocket after attorney's fees, cost, and paying back his health insurance company and medical bills. Thankfully, I knew to not believe the insurance adjuster and that put a huge amount of money in my client's pocket. You need to take certain steps to determine that the insurance company is being accurate when they tell you there's only a certain amount of insurance available. I represented a client who was in a car heading through a green light when another car ran a red light and crashed into my client. My client fractured her wrist. She had to have surgery at the hospital where they put in a plate and screws. I sent USAA a request to tell me how much insurance was available. USAA sent me a response saying that there was $100,000 in bodily injury liability coverage and there was no umbrella coverage, meaning no coverage above the $100,000. Since a broken wrist with a rod and screws in it is worth more than $100,000, I pressed on and asked the driver to complete a statement under oath saying what she was doing at the time of the crash. I wanted to see if she was working. It was only after that when USAA told me that she was working at the time of the crash and there may have been coverage. Well, it turns out there was a million dollars in extra coverage. We were able to get $100,000 of additional money from the employer's insurance company, which brought the settlement to $200,000. I literally doubled the personal injury settlement by looking for insurance coverage. We settled for $200,000 instead of $100,000.
In another case, my client was riding a motorcycle in Miami, Florida, where another car was coming in the oncoming direction. The other car made a left-hand turn and struck my client. My client had lower back pain. He did not take an ambulance to the hospital. In fact, he waited several days before going to the hospital. Ultimately, I sent him to a medical group who agreed to treat him and get paid at the end of the case from the total settlement. My client had an MRI that showed he had a herniated disc. He also had a bruise on his testicle and he had some knee pain. Guy co-insured the other driver and offered $4,500 to settle. They sent me a strong letter essentially saying that my client's herniated disc was not serious. I then sent my client out to a urologist who examined his bruised testicle and concluded that my client had erectile dysfunction. I also sent the MRI of my client's knee to Geico and Geico's doctor found that there was a meniscus tear. But had I believed Geico's insurance adjuster and settled for $4,500, we would have left $95,500 on the table. Here you can see a comparison between Geico's opening offer of $5,500 and the final $100,000 settlement that I was able to get at pre-suit mediation. After paying my attorney's fees costs and paying the medical providers for treatment, my client received $56,756 in his pocket. So 56.8% of the entire settlement went to my client. Tip number two to potentially double your personal injury settlement is when you're entering settlement negotiations with the insurance company, and hopefully they've made the first offer, you tell them that you need a certain amount. Do not use the word want. Want in negotiations is a very weak word. You could say I want a million bucks, but it doesn't sound strong. You need to use the word need. When I deal with an insurance adjuster, I tell them my client needs a certain amount. Obviously, I speak with my client and I find out the amount that my client needs, but I use the word needs with insurance adjusters. I do not say want. In fact, if you tell an insurance adjuster that you want a certain amount, they're probably not gonna pay you that amount. They're gonna pay you less. And if the insurance adjuster asks you what range you think is fair to settle the case and never give them two numbers, they're only gonna remember the smaller number. The third tip to potentially double your personal injury settlement is to get medical treatment if you need it. If you tell the insurance company that you have pain in a certain body part, do not rely on that to build value in your case. You need to get examined by a doctor if you're in pain so that the doctor puts your pain in his medical records. If you don't initially complain of pain and you end up having a tear or herniated disc, expect a very tough fight by the insurance company for saying that you never originally complained of pain and that your injury is not related to the accident. So when in doubt, get checked out. That's the motto. Tip number four to potentially double your personal injury settlement is to go to a doctor who won't kill your case. Unfortunately, there's doctors out there that do not like personal injury claims. I've had clients who have gone to doctors and the doctors essentially went out of their way and put in the medical records. Patient was referred here by his attorney. A doctor doesn't have any reason to write in his medical record that an attorney referred a patient to him, but some just don't like personal injury claims or people that make personal injury claims, the doctor may think that later on down the line an insurance adjuster may see that in the records and may think less favorably upon the claimant, the doctor may be trying to hurt the patient's case. I've also had doctors who my clients go to and the intake form that my client completes doesn't even ask them if they were in a motor vehicle accident or how the accident happened. I've literally had doctors who my clients have treated with and months into the treatment, when I contact the doctor to speak with them about my client's injuries, they say, we had no idea he was in a car accident or she was in a car accident or slip and fall. So at that initial visit, be sure to write down your reason for going to the doctor. If it's a slip and fall, put that in the initial intake forms. If it's a car accident, put that in the initial questionnaire. Don't assume that the doctor is going to put down in his notes that you were in an accident. While most doctors will do that, I've seen several that do not do that. I once heard an attorney say that the doctor is the most important part of a personal injury case. I don't necessarily believe that 100%. However, the same doctor can either say that no future treatment is needed or that same doctor can say that the client needs a knee replacement and then a revision knee surgery, which can add significant value for the future medical and future pain and suffering part of the claim. The doctor who you see is very important for your personal injury case. One doctor can say that a herniated disc or a tear is old and existed before the accident, while another doctor can say that your herniated disc or tear was caused by the accident or at least aggravated by the accident. In one case, my client tripped on a curb at an apartment complex as you can see from the photo, it was painted the same color as the surrounding flooring and she said she didn't see it. 
she broke her femur, which is the leg bone between the kneecap and the hip, and she had surgery. Now, when I went to meet in person with the doctor that operated on her femur bone, I asked him, doctor, do you agree with me that the surgery was a result of the accident? Now, this question is like a softball for a doctor. It is the easiest question that any doctor will agree with when you have a fracture in emergency surgery. After all, an ambulance took her from the accident scene to the hospital and he performed emergency surgery on her. The doctor looked at me and said, I can't agree with that. I told the doctor, I said, you're kidding, right? She tripped and fell at an apartment complex. An ambulance took her to the hospital. They did emergency surgery on her. What else did it come from? He thought about it again and he said, you know what, you're right, I'll put that down. That is pretty much the only thing the doctor would agree upon in that case. Now there's other doctors out there who for the same accident and injury would say that my client needs a future hip replacement and a revision surgery in the future and they will estimate the amount of medical bills that could easily be $50,000 or more and that may add significant value to the pain and suffering and future medical bill claim. There are people out there that think people who make personal injury claims are gaming the system. The reality is it's a fair system. The insurance company in this case for the apartment complex they have the ability to, in litigation, after a lawsuit's filed, to hire a doctor to examine you, and he can say whatever he feels is accurate. Tip number five to potentially double your personal injury case is to let the insurance company make the first offer. Do not make the first offer and set a ceiling on your case. Let them make the first offer. Although it does not happen frequently, I've had the insurance company from time to time make a reasonable opening first offer that I looked at and said, whoa, that's actually fair. But if you make the first move and you make a settlement demand that's too low, you have set a ceiling on the amount of money that you're gonna get paid for. For example, let's say that the insurance adjuster has $50,000 in settlement authority to settle the case. Now, he's not gonna tell you that he has $50,000, but let's say that's what he has. If you not knowing any better, demand $35,000, which is much less than the $50,000, the insurance adjuster is likely not going to just jump on the $35,000 and pay you that. He's likely gonna offer less than the $35,000, maybe 15,000, 25,000, or something like that. So in that same case, if you would let the insurance adjuster make the first move, perhaps he would start off with an opening offer of $25,000. Tip number six to potentially double your personal injury settlement is to send the adjuster high jury verdicts. You would need to subscribe to a service like Westlaw or Lexis or Verdict Search and pay a monthly fee or a one-time fee, which is quite expensive. Look for similar injuries such as yours and send those high verdicts only to the insurance company. Of course, you're not gonna send the low verdicts, you wanna send them the high verdicts where people in your similar circumstances have gotten a high jury verdict. Now, I don't do this in every case, but in some cases I do do it. Tip number seven to potentially double your personal injury settlement actually refers to doubling the amount of money in your pocket on this tip. That is, if you go to a hospital or other medical provider and you have a large medical bill, you can try to negotiate that bill. I've had this happen. For example, in a case with my client Odalis, who was an occupant of a vehicle that was rear-ended by another vehicle, my client had soft tissue injuries. She did have a CT scan at the hospital. AAA insurance company insured the at-fault vehicle, and the most we could get was $25,000. Odalis had a $16,500 hospital bill. I was able to get the hospital to knock that bill down to $7,500. That put an additional $9,000 in Odalis's pocket. Watch these videos here so you can learn how to get the largest settlement in the shortest amount of time possible.